So we were wheeling and dealing and got another grain cart. Again, let's get to it. So I ended up trading in my other grain cart. It was just uh, with harvest going on, I didn't have time to fix it. So now I have a 1326 here uh, with big uh, floater tires on. So I think it looks good on this old uh, Steiger. So uh, if you catch the live screen, Grant was harvesting his soybeans. So harvested a giant field of soybeans. So what that tells me is soybeans are ready to go and we need to get into our soybeans. The only problem is is we don't have a draper. We need to remedy that. So if you see this field over here to the side is our soybean field and it's ready to go. You want to harvest your soybeans before it starts snowing or something like that because otherwise it is miserable getting that out of the field. And two, the pods start dropping and start leaving crops out in the field, replanting next year's crop. Just not a good deal. All right, I'm gonna jump in my Honda. So I still have my trucks that are full sitting on the in the field over there. So I need to run over there and uh, unload them. And then I can uh, swap the auger to another bin so we can start uh, unloading our soybeans as a plan anyways got our uh, harvesters sitting out here in the field everything's uh, sitting out here I know I'm bad I should have parked it back in the, the shed but uh, it, was, it ran late when I was harvesting this field so I just ended up leaving them here all right we'll start these girls up here let the air build up in them. It's pretty warm today, so um, they should start up good. So we already have, what, uh, four loads put into our grain bin. So we got a pretty good bumper crop off of this big field. So these fields are big in Nebraska, and I just love how that chopper chops all that stuff off nice and clean so just love this corn stock texture they have on this map makes it so much more realistic we still have a few more fields of corn to get done here but uh, we gotta change over to soybeans swap our harvesters over the grain machine here it's easy to change over the old uh, cedar here this thing is a little bit harder so we, it'll take us a little bit longer but it, oh well also I never even picked up a draper head so I have to pick up two draper heads so I got a good deal on two 35 foot McDon draper heads I know they're just 35 foot but uh, this is like I'm pretty sure this is considered a 6 series uh, harvester and this is only a 7 series so 7 series harvester pulling a uh, big 45 foot or 40 foot draper head is kind of pushing it. It's, it's a little bit, it's a lot for that harvester. So uh, beans I have two harvesters. I don't really have a lot of soybeans this year. I'm just going to buy two 35 foots. These harvesters will get the field done and lickety split anyways with two of them running. So it's not a bad deal that way. All right, so these should be uh, good and running. So we're gonna take these over. And so another reason why I got that big uh, cart is it has a built-in scale, so that way I can uh, weigh all my crops, especially when I'm putting them in the bin like this. I need to weigh them. Alright, so we're going to park this over here by our soybean field. Hopefully right about here will work out. Let 
now I get to walk all the way over there to my other Lone Star. Alright, so we'll jump into this Lone Star and unload this. And we should be ready to go then. I really like this uh, truck way better because it, uh, it definitely uh, unloads better into our uh, auger here. So, holds a fair amount. It's just not really made for grain, but that's okay. Unloading here. There we go. Is that empty now? Have to check. We should be empty. Alright, so I'm gonna move this semi over, then I gotta move this uh, tractor over to the next bin. Start my dryer up also. Little old beast is getting it done. Alright, so now we get to move this giant auger, my least favorite thing to do. So I plan on putting the soybeans in this big, uh, this big hopper here. So I want to get it just right, so hopefully I can unload still on the road. We'll have to see. Gotta raise this little, uh, hopper here. Uh, usually you want to lower your auger when you're uh, driving like this, but uh, means we're just going to have to raise it right away. Lower it doesn't really pay. Got to go awful slow when you have an auger this high because uh, they're a little tipsy. I mean, that's a lot of weight. Best thing to have is hydraulics for your lift though. I mean, that makes it so much easier. I used to have to do it the old school way where you had to get out, crank it. That was never any fun. Looks like we are good up here. So, now we just gotta lower. There we go. So, okay, now that's set up. Now we just have to go pick up our draper heads here. Oh, Gina, forgot to feed you. There we go. Sorry about that. So we are pulling the second draper head back. So uh, I was hoping to get a John Deere draper head, but uh, they didn't have any 35 foot. They didn't even, they didn't even have any 40 foot. 40 foot so I definitely can't withstand a 45 foot on a 7 series harvester so I'm just going to stick with my uh, 35 foot uh, McDon. McDon makes some dra great draper heads anyways and uh, best thing about these is I don't have to trailer them all the time which uh, saves me time, saves me transport time saves a lot of time if you think about it so playing it bad about them it's got to calibrate them a lot but that's all right definitely getting a late start today but uh soybeans usually you can't start them early in the morning anyway so got to wait for that dew to come off now we are should be ready to i'm hoping that they're ready to go anyways so now i just have to hurry up and get the corn harvester set up for uh, soybeans changed over I mean and uh, get them uh, corn heads off all right we will start these beasts up let the hydraulics warm up a little bit or at least get a little bit less than a uh, field temp but and uh, we'll run that over gotta fold this head up So I greased them up, they're all ready to go, the John Deere's changed over, I still have to change over the, the silver bullet there, but everything should be ready. 
And I just love these big tires on this thing. It's convenient about having a newer harvester is it is easier to change over. It's not as easy on the 6 series as it is, well this is really the 600 series as it is in the 700 series, but uh, it's still pretty easy. It doesn't take long. Gotta fold up my auger here so I don't run into the grain bin while I'm doing this. I'm trying to put it on this trailer and I didn't really give myself much room. I'm just gonna trailer this just so it doesn't have to sit on the ground primarily. Alright, that should be on there good. We just gotta strap it down. Alright, so now we just have to hook up to the draper head. I know that that trailer isn't really meant for that size of head, but uh, it came with the building, and we just ended up buying, purchasing it. So, uh oh, I don't know if I can get out of that gate now. I'm gonna have a tight fit. Put this thing up here. Make sure everything is running correctly. Just checking everything over, make sure that draper head's running good before I uh, get it into the field. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this running and I'm gonna go get that gleaner and change it over here quick. All right, just folding up this head now. So I did change this over, so it took a while, uh, but. It's done now, so we only have to do it a few times a year, so it's not a big deal. So I still like my old gleaner. It's an older combine, but you know what? It's paid off, and it gets it done. So, unfortunately, I'm just going to leave this head on the ground here. Alright, I'll turn this head on. Looks like everything's running. Looks like we are ready to go. Let's get this green machine in the field. Now, hopefully, I didn't make a mistake. I can still get out of this. Uh oh. Looks like uh, that's a tight fit. I'm not gonna get it that way. I'm gonna have to take this head off. Oh man. All right, we are gonna start cutting in the field right here. Start running this thing around. Make sure we are Ooh, getting 100 bushels per acre there. Uh-oh, missing a little bit, gotta get over. Soybeans are flying in there, that's for sure. I'm still missing. Not used to running this smaller head, that's for sure. Make sure I'm clearing the semis here. Parked almost right next to the field. Don't have much of a road there, so we don't really have much of a choice. I'm gonna get one round around here, and then I'll start the hired hand on the gleaner. Uh, as you can see, so yeah, we're filling up quickly, which is good. We don't have a lot of soybeans this year, so we need this field to be a bumper crop before of our uh, bills. We gotta uh, pay our banker. He's crazy, that Tim guy. I'm gonna get a few headlands done down here, and then I'll get Timmy and the gleaner. Well, Timmy likes a gleaner. As you can see here in Nebraska, we do not leave any basically margin for any unused land. I mean, you can see how close these all these uh, fields are. I just ran into a clutches field there. Hopefully I didn't do much of a damage, but 
you could see how close these fields are in Nebraska and it's just because you want to use every bit of land you possibly have you don't want to give up any land so that's why all these fields are extremely close here so there's not much room for uh, that way you get as max all your land is basically max used with crop you know I, I would say there's a uh, mostly every farmer likes to do that because but some land just with the the growth of they might have some uh, shrubbery or uh, just the land contour doesn't really allow it but when you have nice flat land like in Nebraska not hardly much trees around you do see some trees but I mean back in the day this just used to be giant fields of prairie where the buffalo roamed and everything so now it's mostly uh, just small built up towns with big giant fields in it We are already over 80%, so that's going to probably be a problem. I don't think I'm going to get around, which is not a bad thing, because uh, we're getting great bush bushels per acre here, but uh means I'm going to have to go get run back to the grain cart. Don't tell Clutch, but I'm uh, going to turn around in his... Uh, harvest field right here, or harvest section of this field. You'll have to forgive me. You'll probably barely tell it was even me, being it's going to have combine tracks in it, harvester tracks in it anyways. Alright, so we are going to cut a pass here for the grain cart before we get too far. little bit heavy here. There we go. Harvester's beeping at us. We're pretty full. Alright, so we'll get this uh, old beast running over there. Probably should have just ran on the highway because that would have been easier, but on my dumbos. Alright, we'll just start filling up in there. Back this out of the way. As you can see, uh, Timmy's running over there. Ooh, there we go. Not doing a very good job backing up with my articulated tractor. All right, we're gonna leave that right there and start back to harvesting. You gotta make sure you fold up your augers when you're running around highline pools here, because trust me, I know. You can wrap around a highline pool easily, lickety split. Make sure we don't leave any stragglers here because this is a field right next to a highway. Got to make sure we look like professionals. No one's questioning our harvesting ability. Because uh, trust me, I don't want to hear it from the neighbors. Because I know they'll heckle me, especially that this neighbor called Austin. He loves to heckle people. Timmy made it to this side of the field, looks like. Harvesting down, so I'm going to do another uh, headland pass here. And then I'll probably uh, start going up and down the other side of the field. I was thinking, I was just like, why the heck did I bring the semis to the field here? That makes no sense. I should have just uh, put one at the auger because the 
the grain cart, it can definitely keep up with two harvesters running in soybeans and running back to the farmyard. And just a stupid move, so I'm going to have to remedy that once I get to back over by them. Probably set that uh, the belt trailer up just because uh, that trailer works so nicely unloading. So really convenient how easy it is to run. If you can see right there, this is why a lot of gleaners have uh, a lot of people frown on them because you can see just by their uh, straw spread here. You can really tell. So this is their straw spread, not very wide just because they just have one slinger back there. And this is the 600. Now, take for granted the 600 is way newer than that uh, R75. So I think the R75 is a 90, maybe. Not for sure exactly what year is built in, but so the cleaners have gotten better at spreading their straw, but I mean this 600 kind of tells that story that that's a true statement. So uh, I'm leaving a little bit of gap, if you can tell right there. So basically, I need to set my AB line so nice and straight because. Uh, the gleaner has some guidance, but we don't talk to each other, so that way I'm making a nice straight line. I didn't really do a straight line when I was going around the field. So, uh, we are at 80%. Sorry, we are at 50%. So, uh, we're half full already. So, I'm gonna take this, uh, load star move it over to the grain bin once I get over there and then uh, here sh pretty soon I think my wife's gonna take over in this uh, the green machine she likes this uh, nice quiet dust proof cab and looks like uh, old Timmy is already waiting for me so Timmy's gonna have to wait you wait Timmy I'm gonna have to get remedy my semi situation or uh, let the air build up a little bit. Yeah, Timmy's waiting. The only thing bad about using this trailer is we'll have to uh, start up the truck to uh, basically run the belt system, but it should work all right, I hope. So we'll just keep that old load star running, guggling gas. And I'll run over here and uh, get my wife started harvesting here first time she ran a draper head so I'm gonna have to teach her a little bit all right we went around with the wife so she's running the draper head so with the basically the ground leveling and the GPS it's kind of easy to run that old uh, uh, John Deere so only thing bad about I don't really want her to run this grain cart is with the draper head especially with this old uh, uh, gleaner here you don't have much room between this and the head so it's a little bit harder to run the to run a grain cart when you're running with these draper heads because look how close that is that's close all right we'll let uh old uh timmy fill us up here all right good thing about that extension on that gleaner it definitely holds a lot of uh, grain so especially how old that gleaner is so gleaners have always hold, held a lot of grain just from the factory and it has extension so things the hopper in the field that's for sure don't know if my wife's gonna make it around yeah you could really tell that straw spread right here you know this is where what we're driving on now is a gleaner and then this is the s the s600 right here so the only thing that really matters is if you no-till so I don't think we're gonna be no-tilling but you never know so 
we will see when that time comes. So uh, we got a thousand bushels already. So uh, the good thing about this big uh, grain cart, this bigger grain cart I got, is I can basically take another load of uh, grain in here from one of the harvesters. So huge benefit. Ooh, I don't like my wife when she backs up like that. Okay, watch that auger on that uh, highline pull. All right, all right, no. all right. Ooh. Get a little nervous when that happens. It's going good. We got a little bit of weeds in this uh, soybeans here. If you saw, we didn't catch them weeds in time, so got some weeds scattered around the field. All right, so I'm going to take the chance and unload Timmy here on the go. And you really got to worry about driving straight here. All right, we're unloading there. Trying to just keep that, uh, basically, his draper head. Make sure I still have a gap right there. So we're just about full. You can see we have a... Uh, about, about a full tank. We don't have a hopping tank, but we got a full tank. I'm going to take this over, put it into our uh, semi, and then hopefully uh, put it in our auger. And uh, hopefully rush back here and uh, catch my wife before she uh, fills up. I mean, like I said, even with 35 foot uh, heads here, uh, we get this field done in no time flat. Almost forgot I have my auger folded out. I don't know if I would have cleared that or not, but it's too close to call, so alright. Unloading here in this. That's why I like this hopper a lot better, because it's so short to the ground compared to uh, that Wilson. You can really see in there. You know, you can kind of relax, not have to put in gear. It's just kind of nice, so. All right. A big old tank took the whole load of grain cart. Looks like we're racing here and have to go uh, unload my wife here quickly. That's why I like this longer auger on this uh, S600 so much easier. Uh, Timmy's uh, unloading in me. I'm gonna check the straw here. You can really tell that the gleaner kind of puts it to one side because you can tell just by the tires kind of it's a little bit to one side. So gleaner has a, a, a rotor inside. It's basically uh, sideways, which is unlike multiple other rotor combines. So you can tell like this big gap, small gap right there. Just something different that the gleaners do than the other ones.
I picked my drone up here, so I was flying around the drone, and now my wife's waiting on me, of course. Get this dirty machine over there. I think I'm probably going to unload Timmy first, though. Wife's going to have to wait. Alright. Timmy is unloaded. Now I have to unload my wife. I'm sure she was just uh, texting on her phone or playing on her phone anyway, so uh, she wasn't too bothered by it. We are full, completely full for this old thing. So we're going to get this unloaded into the truck and then probably uh, run, try to run that auger at the same time. I know that's a lot of stuff to do, but... I'm trying to keep up with two harvesters, and I'm the only one running grain cart, and I have to unload the truck. I mean, it gets a little tricky at times. We'll see if we can get this done. Alright, looks like we got that thing full. We will uh, unload in here. Alright, we will start this old uh, tractor up here and uh, start this auger running. This old thing running. PTO on. The only thing bad about this is I have to control the controls for this the whole uh, dump trailer is in the truck, so it's a little bit tricky. I, I guess got to have it slow enough to hopefully uh, fast enough to keep the auger running at a good speed and slow enough to not overfill, which is tough sometimes. Oh shoot, 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 I was paying attention to my phone, oh man, oh. Oh my goodness. Oh man, I really made messed up. So that thing definitely freaking went going. So I had the belt going. I wasn't paying attention. I had too many things going at one time. So if you see, like, of course, you know, it kind of just shot over. So I don't know if I had the belt running too quickly or what. But we made a huge mess. Oh, man. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, man, I really need a grain vac or something. Oh. Whew, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Uh, well, I guess I should just unload all the, the grain cart and the truck here. So the harvesters are done. So basically this is all of our grain. Oh. That's a lot of grain. This is like 500 bushels of grain. I, oh man, I really messed up. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm such a rookie, millennial, whatever you want to call me. But ugh, this is frustrating. Man, I'm glad I did this and I wasn't a hired hand doing this because at least the boss man does this. You can't fire the boss man. So I think I'm gonna unload the this truck here. Get this done unloading here and. Yeah, and then once that's done, we will uh, probably start pushing that up with the tractor, or actually, I think I'll put it all in the GMC. I'll get the tractor over here, pick this all up, put it in the GMC, and then we can dump it into the farm king the proper way. Start up this top kick here. All right. We will take this over. This is a good thing when you have these uh, dump trucks around your farm. You can always find a use for them. Maybe I should have been using this to uh, unload instead of the uh, old uh, load star. Oh well. I don't know exactly what the best position to put this in. Maybe right there. We'll start with right there for now. All right, now we need to go get our uh, 84. All right, back this out. So we are definitely use this uh, loader tractor a lot, that's for sure. So uh, hopefully uh, this thing holds a fair amount of grain. Never uh, move grain with this, I don't think gonna have to be awful careful I don't get none of the rocks in the grain because uh, I think I'll probably get some type of dockage rock is probably not a good dockage you want 
There's about a hundred bushels in the bucket right now, so that means we might uh, drop like 600, maybe 700 bushels right there. It's crazy. We'll dump this in the GMC. So basically, this GMC, otherwise, if I'm dumping it in the auger, I'm going to have to leave it all around the outskirts of it. So this way, it hopefully be a cleaner and we won't make a giant mess. So we got just about 50, so this makes 500, so between 500 and 600 bushels I put on the ground. Uh, not trying to brag here, but it's kind of impressive to do that much without even noticing it. You know, it's pretty impressive. You know, you gotta count a win everywhere you have it. Looks like the rest of this I'm gonna have to do it by the old, uh, old fashioned way. The hand callus way of freaking putting it into the bucket the manual way <sighs> so I got all the grain picked up so you might be uh, asking me why aren't you just putting it in the auger so if I'm putting it in the auger when I'm scooping it here I can't tell if I get any rocks in there or not and the bucket kind of one when I put it in there I can sift through it and pick out all the rocks as best as I can if I put it in here, uh, I can't sift through that because there's augers there. That, that's going to be some uh, gone fingers. So basically, this way I can kind of pick through it and make sure, wipe off the dirt as best as possible, get out the rocks. And uh, yeah, so we are all cleaned up here, except the little bit of mess I made uh, when I was dumping in the truck. We will get this last uh, little bit dumped in the truck. All right. The last of the grain was uh, what two two hour mistake right there. That's why you're always supposed to pay close attention. I'm just glad no one was hurt, but it was a farm accident. But thank y'all for watching, and I will see you later here in Nebraska. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe.